Welcome back to part two, the final installment of building the chop bot. The project resumes by making the split clamp to hold the torch. I made this out of half inch thick billet aluminum. It might seem kind of overkill to make the clamp as precise as this, but this is my standard go-to saddle type clamp whenever I have to clamp something round. I've made a whole bunch of these so I can actually make them pretty quickly and I can usually do it in a pretty mistake-proof fashion because I do it so often. I drilled a one inch hole through my aluminum plate and then with the boring bar sized that hole out to about 1.063. The body of my torch is about 1.060 so I just left a little bit of extra clearance so that it would fit into the clamp easily. Before breaking down the setup for boring the hole in the plate I did a quick test fit with the plasma torch. It fit just fine. After boring the hole to size, I flipped the clamp up on its edge and then drilled two holes on either side of the hole to use for my clamp bolts. This looks a lot like a bearing cap on the bottom of an engine block and it's constructed in the same way. I just use socket head cap screws that are actually mounted flush with the edge of the face of the aluminum plate. It's not necessary to go this fancy, but again, this is my standard method for making any kind of split clamp. So I just do it the same every time, same size tools, and it makes it real repeatable where I don't make mistakes. While everything's still lined up on the mill table, I put my tap into the drill chuck and I run it down part way into the clamp. I do this just to make sure that the tap is 100% straight with the hole that I've just drilled. After that, I disengage the tap from the drill chuck and then I drive it by hand as far as I can. Last step before breaking down this setup is to run a 3 8 inch two flute end mill into the holes to give me my counter bore for the two quarter inch cap screws that are going to hold the cap in place. Next step is to drill the two lower holes in the split clamp. These are the holes that are going to hold it to my backing plate. The backing plate is actually going to be a piece of nylatron plastic that's going to actually insulate the torch clamp from the body of the chop bot itself. The final step after the rear mounting holes is to turn the clamp back on edge into the vise and then use a slitting saw to cut it right down the middle. This will make it like the bearing cap in an engine where each side is exactly a half circle. When I put it together it won't bind and it won't mar the end of my torch. The back part of the torch clamp is just made from some half inch nylatron that I had lying around. I bought a bunch of this stock years ago so it's really nice to be able to use for projects like this. I chose the Nylatron because I didn't really know for sure if I would need to electrically insulate the torch from the rest of the body of the chop bot. There's a couple of electronics inside the control box, namely the electronics that are built into the speed control. I didn't know if there was any possible way to zap those by having some of the trace voltage from the torch actually transfer through the body of the chop bot. So this was just a precaution. It might not even been necessary, but it was simple enough to do because I had the material around. So I decided just do it this way. If I change my mind and want to make another back clamp plate out of aluminum, I can always change the part. It's just one little square with two slots and the two holes mounted in it.
if you look really closely at that vertical Nylotron piece, you can see that I actually staggered the split clamp out to the front by about 30 thousandths of an inch. So there actually is no aluminum in contact with the frame of the chop bot. So really the torch head is completely electrically isolated from the frame of the chop bot. With the split clamp done, it was time to drill a hole through the front of the Hobart plasma cutter so I could mount my quarter inch microphone jack for my interconnect cable. If you look real closely, you'll see on my drill bits that I use a series of tubes or spacers to keep the drill bit from plunging deep into the enclosure of the Hobart. I also packed the front of the Hobart with some paper towels to make sure that metal chips wouldn't start floating around inside and getting places I didn't want. I pulled the schematic for the Hobart and saw that the color code was white and brown for the trigger on the handle of the torch. These are the two wires that I'm going to cut into with the scotch locks so I can have my secondary remote control of that trigger without having to deal with the slide lock that's on the handle while the torch is actually mounted inside the split clamp. I checked my connections inside the enclosure to make sure that the scotch locks were making good contact with the wire and then that there was actually continuity between the wire on the scotch lock and the pin on the multi-plug that went onto the control board of the chop bot. Once I got everything mounted, I plugged the cable into the connector and I actually ohmed out the end of the cable too to make sure that I was getting continuity all the way through. The moment of truth came when it was time to flip the switch on the control panel of the chop bot and make sure that the torch did turn on. As I had hoped and actually expected, it did work fine. Cut speed and cut quality was super easy to control with the potentiometer to control the speed of the drive motor on the front of the chop bot. And as you can see from these two attached pictures, the cut quality is super nice. It almost looks like you had cut it carefully with a fine tooth hacksaw. The cuts are perfectly straight and all that's really left is that little bit of slag at the bottom that you can break off with the pliers. Overall, I couldn't be more happy with the results and I'll never go back to hand cutting plate again.